Hello folks and welcome to the post-match reaction for Kilmarnock 1, Rangers 2, brought to you by the Gallant View podcast and the Rangers Journal. Uh, my name's Colin and the post-match reactions are back. It's been a while um, and I was uh, getting a wee bit nervous <laughs> there, if I'm being honest, listeners, I thought, um, deciding today that we were going to bring them back. I thought I'd jinxed it and I was speaking to Kai, um, also the man from the, the Rangers Journal. Uh, um but oh, we got there, we got there. But in the build up, we were saying that this was going to be one of the the tougher games in the running and the in the title race that we're in. And you know, it proved to be, proved to be. Uh, but uh, Rangers off to the worst possible start. Um Kilmarnock uh, looking bang up for it. Um but I thought Rangers really gifted them uh, but, uh, an early chance to go ahead here. John Lundstrom, he turns his back and jumps um, as the commander player takes the shot off the, the edge of the box and his arm is just flailing a wee bit. I don't think we can really compl- we can complain about the rule, but I think the rule's been applied properly there. I'm just annoyed that John Lundstrom, he's maybe, you know, a bit of a midfield general, but he's turned his back and... Um, he doesn't know where the where the ball's going and that's his arm. And the refs blew for a penalty in the eighth minute. What's worse for me, but uh, and I'll be interested to get everybody's thoughts on this as we dissect it um, on both podcasts. Borna Barisic. Honestly, oh, what's it? So just before that penalty, Borna Barisic, um, he's, he's at the. He's, he's chased, he's seen out a lost cause. Um, the Kilmarnock winger is chasing him down, and Borna Barisic just has to see the ball out, but instead he feels a little, you know, a tap. It's not a push, a tap, and he just decides to go down and try and win the free kick, and he ends up handling the ball. And the ref gives a free kick to Kilmarnock, um, and that from that from that free kick, Rangers lose that penalty. Uh, I, I was fuming at Borna, just it's so silly, so silly. Um, and from then on in, he, he really had a poor game. He was giving away silly bookings, he was giving the ball away. And that was really, that that was really, you know, consistent through that first half. Rangers weren't at the races at all. And, uh, you know, what I was saying about Borna Barris, I just don't want to single him out too, too much. I thought Diamandi was giving away silly fouls, Connor Golson was, we picked up silly bookings. We we lacked so much physicality. We really played in the commander's hands. Commander, we knew if they went a goal up or if they could get any um, half time, but still even, they would have they would have tried to make it difficult to break down. They would have tried to make it scrappy. And credit to them, that's a that's what Derek McInnes is good at um, instilling in these sides. And we just we just couldn't get anything sticking. Um, probably the only two two half decent chances we had in the first half was from the corner Golson um, headers from the corner and what is it with corner Golson by the way he wins so many headers he's, he finds space so well but he's got the heat the, the shape of a 50 pence piece um, it's so frustrating he does the hard part finding the space he's just trying to get it on target so we get to half time and I'm really looking for a lot of a lot of physicality came into the team. I was really hoping that Sterling would come on um, and I was hoping for Borna Barisic uh, to be taken off for Yilmaz. Um, my prayers are half answered as Borna goes off for Yilmaz and Silva off for Dessers. And I think it's fair to say Dessers did do better um, throughout the game than, than Silva did. Um, so, yeah, and, and Rangers, you can tell they, they've got a little bit more urgency in it, but we, we really, we, we very nearly get caught off um, off guard again and Jack Butlin steps up to make a terrific save. Come on, go down the left-hand side and get the ball cut across the middle. John Suter is, he, he, we've seen John Suter do that a couple of times. He just gets caught under the ball as he tries to clear it and it cuts through and I think it might be Matty Watkins. Um, hits the first time and Butland with a reaction save. I don't know how he manages to get down to the ground that quickly, but strong hand to it, out wide for Tavernier to clear. Um, and then the, shortly after that, in the 55th minute, that man who I've just said, James Tavernier, who again, he didn't have his best of games, but I don't want to single too many people out because it was far too many people know the races in that first half. 
Tav was Tav does what Tav does, as as David Martindale says, and it's a terrific free kick. Um, keeper gets a hand to it, but it's, it's it's in far too much pace there, and the keeper's far side, and Rangers are back in the game. Sterling comes on for McCausland. Ross McCausland probably got a lot of stick because I don't know why. Um, there's um, um, there's a section of Rangers fans that just really don't want to give him a you know give him a a chance I gave my buy. It wasn't his game tonight, absolutely, but I'm not prepared to write him off. But anyway, Ross McCausland goes off for Dujon Sterling. That much needed physicality he comes in. And four minutes later, Tom Lawrence, who probably for me was Rangers' best player all over the game. I think he was the only one who wasn't terrible in the first half and he, he had a decent second half. Um Tom Lawrence, he, he picks up a loose ball and the box hits it first time. So calm, composed, lovely finish placed in the bottom corner and Rangers are two one up. Um fifteen minutes into the, the second half and the what I'm putting this down there, and I got a text at the time uh, through Daily Bollock of the of the pod. Um Clermont that took his cap off. It's the first time I've seen by Philip Clermont with a, a cap on. I didn't like it. I don't like change. The listeners will know I'm superstitious. So we had his um, cap off for this. Same a cap again, mate. You're better than that, Phil. You're better than that. But anyway, um, the next half hour. I. I felt it was never better chances after the after Rangers went two one up. Um, I think Rangers had a couple of chances, most notably the um, Dessers um, picks up a stray ball from Finlay, manages to get his way into the box, but. Um, uh, the ball deflects off Finlay's hand for a, well, I was about to say for what should have been a VAR check, but it wasn't a check. For me, that's as clear a penalty as what John Lundstrom's was. Um, probably more a penalty. Um, you know, it, there was a couple of shots for outside the box, but I think Kilman up just fair to say had the better chances. And they got really, really nervy towards the end as. Six minutes were added on. We we get to seven and a half minutes and Kamarnock are getting two corners and it was just I felt it was going to be the most Rangers fine to concede in the last minute. But um they, they didn't they saw it out and again I'm gonna I'm going to speak a lot about this. Um, I'm gonna contradict myself from going from the post match reaction to actually discussing it on a pod. My opinion will change because when I watch a game, I'm stuck in that moment and it's a nerve speaking as opposed to actually um, analysing the game. Um, I think when I think about it in the cold light of day tomorrow, Rangers were probably better in that second half than what I felt. It's just, this is what a title race feels like, folk. Um, I'm seeing a few comments coming in saying uh, Dessers changed the game, one for Aldo, and I totally agree with you. Another black point tonight, Cortez going down holding his hamstring and um, having to go off for Scott Wright. Uh, I hope that's not too too serious. Uh, it kind of struck me similar to when Lovelace went off. Um, I hope it's not anywhere near as bad. Um, but again, it's just we, we seem to be cursed. But anyway, um, overall, happy post-match reaction, happy first one back. Um, and myself, Scott, Chris, and special guest Adam from Heart and Hand will be on the live stream tomorrow um, to probably have more of a coherent <laughs> reaction on it. But I um, hope you've enjoyed this. Let us know what you think in the comments. Um, these post-match reactions will be brought to you in partnership from the Gallant Few and the, the Rangers Journal will be both pods and um, will be supporting each other um, and they'll be up in both pages. If you want to find uh, more from, from either pod, you can get us both on YouTube. You can also find us on Twitter. So the Gallant Few is at the Gallant Few 1 and the Rangers Journal is at Rangers Journal and plus go on to the pages with between the between the two podcasts and um, the two sites are so much blogs, 
writing podcast analysis interviews um you won't be left short so if you can go and give it both pods a like follow subscribe retweet if you like what you see if you don't like what you see just find me a sympathy like all right folks but until then we'll be back with you with a post-match reaction um after motherwell hopefully it's another happy one and we'll speak to you again then take care <laughs>